today together, begin the day together pretty much, and, and this week. And as we do that, I'm just wondering, what is it, whether that was this morning or sometime over this past week, what is it that caught your attention? Whether that was something you saw, you tasted, you heard, what touched your heart? What helped you to pause and smile? Uh, the green of the county. Everywhere you go right now, wherever you drive, the hills, the valleys, the everywhere, the little green sprouts of grass are coming up. Yeah, it's just quite lovely and refreshing to see that. Absolutely. All the greening that is taking place all over the county and that refreshing sense that, that comes with that. Yes, seeing a beautiful snowy egret. So beautiful. Uh, when I was turning onto the boulevard, I went right here, um, by the deer on the east side of the, the boulevard, um, coming down, and I got worried, <laughs> but it made a, did a right turn and went along a little ways. And it was just a big, beautiful, probably doe. Me and 
seeing a beautiful doe on the on the drive in and pausing, hoping it's not gonna come across the pathway, but being able, and it didn't thankfully, but being able to live in a setting rural enough that we get to experience that and see that and um, is just a wonderful thing and inspiring, as Jean said. Walking into the nail salon on, on Friday and seeing Norma. And Norma, it's good to see you this morning here with us. And that brought brought joy to Levon's um, heart and soul to be able to see you. And, and mine as well, seeing, seeing your picture. Um, I know how much that means to you. So, uh, memories of time and talent with were in mind on Saturday for brunch with the team and the Ricky. And that was really So, memories of time and talent by being able to enjoy a brunch at the Craig's home. Um, <laughs> yes, the first post-pandemic or mid-stream pandemic um, time and talent. And I'm sure the taste is something that made you all smile and, and enjoy. I see other nods, so yes. Anyone else this morning? I know for me, there's this stretch I always look forward to, um, and some years it doesn't peak quite as much, but there's this one little stretch um, coming between Ukiah and Hopland, and if you, there's a little hill that goes up, so you can barely see where it's at, but if you know to look, there's a, some intentional rose vineyards that were planted, and they provide a swath of red, orange, two shades of green, and a yellowish, and it's just absolute, they're very symmetrical, they're, it's just like somebody perfectly painted the lines, and it's just something when the light hits it, uh, absolutely beautiful. So it's something that I try to spy as I drive by, and this week, um, just seeing all of the colors and all the leaves still there uh, just continue to make me smile. Absolutely. So this weather allowing Blake and his son to be up scuba diving up north. Wow, how amazing. Anyone else before we continue with our announcements this morning? I'm so grateful for the things that you share, and I just invite you to, to keep taking note. What is it that helps you to pause in the midst of all the busyness and to smile and remember God's presence and awareness of you? Are there any announcements that you might have today? On the Tuesday, the 23rd. You wanna, why don't you come on oh, up here? Okay. Tuesday, the 23rd, we are going to be putting up the Chrisman tree. And at, that's at 10 a.m. So anybody who would like to come and help decorate it is more than welcome. It's a special thing for that we do in our sanctuary. We made most of those Chrisman ornaments years and years and years ago at a couple of workshops. Um, the tree, the Chrisman ornaments, if you don't know, are white and gold, usually, and are symbols of Christ. So we are going to be doing that here in the sanctuary at 10 a.m. Tuesday the 23rd. And I know that's hard to believe, but that's next week already, November 23. Yeah. Um, later in our service, uh, during the time that we give our pledges, um, 
Jean will make mention of this as well, but I just want to let you know it's okay if you put your pledges today into the offering plate, but we'd like to encourage you at the end of the service to put them in the model of the church that's here in the back. And at the same time to take one of the masks that's there. Um, if you are like me and these masks might fit you a little big on your face and slide down, there are these little um, silver long skinny things and they have a, you can peel off the back and stick them inside. That way they can pinch around your nose. So there's, those are available as well if you might need it, take it. But this is just a, and even if you didn't bring your pledge card today, please take one of these. This is our gift to you as we continue to partner together for the upcoming year. And we just wanna say thank you just for all the ways you contribute, your time, your talent, and also your treasures. The pledge cards are in the bulletin. There are pledge cards in the bulletin. And you can also go online to our um, Tithely uh, platform, which is on our website, if that's an easier way for you to, to make your pledge. But if you want to go ahead and write it down today and then just put it into the um, church model at the end of the service. I don't think Tithely is set up for the, the pledge. It is. Oh, it is. Okay. It is. There's, and there's a difference. You can put in for 2021 if you're completing off this year. And then if you're pledging ahead for next year, um, or putting in for next year, if you just want to pay it, it's uh, you look for the 2022. So she does have it set up. We can look at it yeah. afterwards. Um, <laughs> throughout the service, just want to remind you, you might be hearing some things, some people on your mind not here today, or things that we share about. And I just encourage you to fill out our hug alerts, put those into the offering plate um, later in our service. If you have any updated information, filling out, um, you can put it on our visitor card, just that part on the back where it talks about your name and your address, uh, continue to do that. And just um, also note that there is an insert for later in the service um, and we will be singing uh, once again, rooted and grounded in love. Um, and then the very last thing, if there are no other announcements, I just want to um, make mention that next Sunday will be our Thanksgiving Sunday. And this will be an opportunity for all of us to be involved by sharing some of the stories that we have of gratitude from this past year and, and maybe even before that, of the different ways that God has been journeying with us in our lives and the things that we are grateful for. If you're not going to be here and you'd like to participate, please send in, or you're not able to be here in person regardless, perhaps somebody at home, please send in an email um, by the end of the week to the church office or send it directly to me before next Sunday's service and we'll read it for you. We want to include anybody that would like to be included. And if you'd rather not speak it out loud, please re bring something that's written and we'll be happy to read it for you. But just an opportunity to, to share our stories of gratitude um, at this time of Thanksgiving. And next week's service will also include uh, welcoming Christiane as a new member of our church. So there'll be a new member service wrapped into next week's service as well. Um, and that's also a part of, of our gratitude, time of gratitude together. And so we just encourage and invite as many of you who can be here to be a part of that part of our service as well. Are there any other announcements this morning? Let us go ahead and begin our worship service with the ringing of the bell. Good morning, and I want to invite all who to rise in body or spirit as you are able, and we'll join together in the invitation to worship that's printed in your bulletin. Come, let us give thanks to God together. In the deep gratitude, we come to worship God. Let us sing songs and worship together. 
Let us watch for signs of God's presence among us. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness, all are of God. Let us remember all the wonderful things God has done. Come, let us worship God together. We will sing the um, opening hymn, is, uh, this is the day, number... 657 in the Methodist hymnal. invite you now to join together in our opening prayer that's printed in your bulletin. Generous God, our hearts overflow in gladness when we remember all your gifts to us. In this time together, in worship today, touch us, teach us, and inspire us to sow the seeds of your gifts through our ministries so that all may share in abundance you reply. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This morning's scripture reading is from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 to 16. This is an adaptation of New International Version. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath and he came to the town gate. A widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? As she was going to get as she was going to get it, he called, And bring, please, bring me please a piece of bread. As surely as your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, and only a handful of flour in a jar, and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a last meal for myself and my son that we may eat it, and then my son and I will starve to death. Elijah told, said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day God sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. 
And for the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of God spoken by Elijah. May God bless our understanding of these words. Thank you, Jean. I invite you to bow your heads with me in prayer. Oh God, as we spend time looking at this passage together today, I ask that you just speak through me. Help me to communicate what you would have us learn today. what you would have us to hear and take to heart, for you have promised to provide for us. Help us to hear that today. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So why do you suppose that stewardship, although that it's one of the top subjects in the Bible, why do you suppose it is still one of the most sensitive topics to talk about? What makes us squirm when we hear that that's what's going to be talked about? Well, it's a very personal thing, and it's easy to feel on the spot or guilty for not giving enough or that you should be giving more. Um, yeah. Absolutely. It's a very personal thing. And it can feel, make us feel put on the spot or that makes us feel guilty if we're not given, giving enough. Yeah, it can be a very sensitive topic. Anyone else? When it comes right down to it, it has little to do with our actual giving that makes us uncomfortable or on, at unease, feel unease about the topic. And in fact, it has even less to do with money itself. The reason it tends to cause so much unease is because this subject touches us at a fundamental place in our lives. It is personal. And it touches us in that vulnerable place linked to our survival. Whether that's real or imagined, it's valid. It's something that is personal and can leave us feeling vulnerable. You see, our money our successes, our resources, our time, our possessions, they represent our security and our safety. They represent our ability to care for ourselves and those that we love. Additionally, our time and our talents and our treasures and how we use them also reflect our deepest held values. And that can leave us feeling put on the spot when others, when we feel others are looking at us or if there's somebody that's comparing or questioning. It's a personal thing. And so is it any wonder that this topic can leave us feeling uncomfortable for any number of reasons? Today, we conclude our stewardship series by focusing on the final part of what I have been describing as a giving cycle. It is this final component of the cycle that represents a safety and security that surpasses all other resources that we might have. All other. 
First, though, before we go on, let's briefly recap this giving cycle that I have been describing. We began by discussing our motivation for giving. And I have invited you to consider the difference it will make when our motivation is rooted in our experiences of God's unconditional and unchanging love. As God has journeyed with us through the joys and the challenges and everything in between. Last week, we added on to that the second part of the cycle, which is the opportunity we each have to respond to God's love through the giving of our time, our talents, and our treasure. Our response of gratitude for God's love is intended to be very personal and based solely on what we as individuals are able and motivated to give. This part of the cycle is all about responding to God's love versus it being a requirement to earn God's love. If this is not your practice already, you will find that your personal response to God's love will naturally follow when you make it an intentional practice to do the very first step of rooting your motivation to give in your personal experiences of God's love. So what is the third part of the giving cycle? Treasure. It's okay. Any additional thoughts? What is the th so the first one is our motivation, and I'm encouraging us to our motivation to consider what God has done for us, right? And then the second part, so our experience of God's love. The second part is our response to that experience. What is the third part when we respond to that? Any guesses? Loving yourself. Loving yourself. Loving yourself. The act of giving. The act of giving. So that's our response. I'm going to give you a little clue. Look at the title for our sermon today. We're not left to hang out there on our own. It's God's response to us, and that brings it full circle. So when our motivation is experiencing God's love, and we respond to that by giving, God responds to our giving, and then what do we do? We respond to our experience of God's love and blessing, and the cycle continues. That is my recommendation to give that a try. This third part of the giving cycle is God's part in the equation. And I have to admit that this is my favorite part of the cycle because it is essentially all about God. When I think about when I have to give and I also have to manage a household and I need to meet these other needs and it's not just about money, it's, it's the time and it's, it's all the other things. It gets overwhelming when I put all of that just on me and I take God out of the equation. But when I remember the God part of the equation, that's the part that's exciting. That's what makes it possible. But for the cycle to reach its full potential, we do still have a role here because it ultimately requires us to choose trust over the fear of not having enough resources to meet both our pledge and the needs for our everyday living. And I mean 
that whether we're talking about our time, our talent, or our pledges of, of financial giving. Admittedly, choosing trust over fear is often much easier said than done. Not every season in our life is bountiful, whether that be our finances or our physical abilities or whatever gift we have felt confident promising to give in the past. Does it become easier or harder to trust and depend on God when our other securities begin to disappear? Does it become easier or harder? Perhaps that is the very reason why this final part of the giving cycle is the one from personal experience that I find to be both humbling and awe-inspiring. Why? Because God personally responds to our fears and misgivings about what we are able to give. When we trust God with our uncertainty of what we have to give, even though our giving might leave us feeling stretched thin, we can have the certainty that God will bless and multiply whatever we are able to give. And God will also continue to bless and provide what we need in our everyday lives as well. I have experienced and witnessed this far too many times to consider it a coincidence. Our giving cycles truly come full circle with God's personal response to the gifts we give in response to our experience of God's love and provision in our lives. And God will also continue to ensure that whatever we entrust of ourselves to God, God will help us to follow through with that commitment. Let me say that one more time. It's really important. Whatever you entrust to God of yourself, whether that be your time, your talent, your treasures, God will help you to follow through with that commitment. As we put the giving cycle into practice, I promise that if we are intentional about incorporating this into our lives, it will become a perpetual cycle rooted in God's love, where each turn of the cycle will make it easier and easier to trust that God's loving abundance will continue to bless others through us while also providing all our needs day to day. Perhaps that is similar to how it felt for the widow of Zarephath every time she needed yet another miraculous loaf of bread out of the flour and oil that should have run dry days ago. And yet, there continued to be just enough flour and oil every day to provide enough sustenance, not just for two individuals, but three. This widow provides an important example for us. Sometimes the giving cycle 
begins with a step of trust and something compelling that God places on our hearts, asking us to give, to help someone else, and to perhaps even extend beyond what we perceive we are capable of giving. <coughs> In the case of today's scripture reading, somehow this widow is able to look up and beyond her personal situation and respond to another's need while holding out hope that what was promised by God would come to fruition. For indeed, Elijah's request for bread was accompanied by the promise that God would return to her far more than she had given. When Elijah encountered that widow, he extended hope to her. Hope that was wrapped in God's promise of provision for a woman who as a widow did not have any standing in society and was considered less than. But that is not how God saw her. And God's response to the widow's trust undoubtedly made it easier and easier for her to trust and respond to God's love by continuing to make a loaf of bread for Elijah every day, in addition to feeding herself and her son. Something she did right up until the day that the severe drought ended and there was no longer any shortage of flour and oil, just as God had promised. The widow of Zarephath found life and blessing because she chose to trust God. We too have this assurance. When there seems to be only just enough for one last loaf of bread, God promises to provide for all our needs as we trustingly respond to God's love, as we give of our time, talent, and treasure. And as we put this into practice, even in a season of plenty, we should give in faith and trust, looking to God to meet all our needs. If you give God your time, God will multiply it. If you give God your money or your energy, God will multiply that too. It's like planting seeds. If you keep a seed in a sack, it accomplishes nothing. But if you plant it, it multiplies. For example, when you plant just one watermelon seed, you get a bunch of watermelons with hundreds of seeds in them. In the same way, God multiplies whatever you give to God. In 1964, when my parents were just newlyweds, their church had a giving campaign, and they decided to pledge $10. Uh, that's about equivalent to $90 today. But for them, as newlyweds, they, uh, that was a lot of money. And they did not even know how they were gonna meet that commitment. Had no idea where the money was gonna come from, but, but they pledged that $10. And prior to when that pledge was due, they were very surprised when they received a letter in the mail from the treasurer of my mom's nursing class, which had graduated 
a good year prior. That letter contained a check. You guessed it. Ten dollars. It was money that the class unexpectedly had left over and was able to refund to not just my mom, but to every member of her class. That was a lot of money at that time. And that was the first of many such experiences that my parents have, exper have experienced themselves. I was too early in my life, I wasn't born yet, um, but I have since then witnessed time and time again in their lives, in my life, and in the lives of others, this very same principle being put into play. And every single time, God fulfilled God's promise by blessing and multiplying whatever was given. No matter where you find yourself on the giving spectrum, it is a very personal journey that has far-reaching impact. Whatever God is calling you to contribute, God will take and multiply it so that you and we, the United Church of Cloverdale, will be sustained and provided for. I close now with these words from Malachi 3.10. Bring your whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, God says, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough to store it. Amen. come to the time in our service where together we share our joys and our concerns and hold them together in prayer. Are there things today that have brought you joy or that are on your heart 
in concern. As am I. And so Jerry just shares the joy of the friendship um, that Norma and the joy that just having that connection and being able to take uh, newspapers up to her as he visits her and um, and for that together let's say thanks be to God. And Norma know that we continue to keep your healing in prayer and for that we say Lord hear our prayers. So Jean shares the joy of the time and talent brunch um, with several uh, individuals who are able to attend and just the joy of being able to do that um, after nearly two years of not uh, entertaining um, at home. And so for that we say, thanks be to God. I want to continue to thank you all for prayers for my brother Mark. Um, he went home on Tuesday uh, from uh, LA back up to Santa Barbara where they live. And um, he's doing well. Um, he's working with the pain, um, not taking as many painkillers as were prescribed, but trying to balance that with what he can work with. Walking um, three quarters of a mile to a mile and a half each day, a couple of, you know, spreading that out. Um, and just adjusting to the difference in his back. It hurts different places, different days, and part of that has just having been straightened out and after many years of being curved. So uh, he's doing well. He sounds upbeat and positive, and I probably wouldn't tell me if he wasn't, but um, he's doing well. So it's, it's a joy that he's healing. Absolutely, Holly shares the joy of the updates that she's receiving of her brother's healing and that he's been able to go home to Santa Barbara, adjusting to the, the new areas that are hurting, but that is a part of his healing um, as he adjusts to that um, and is able to be even walking at quite a decent distance right now for having just had back surgery. And so for that, we say, thanks, thanks be to God. God. And we continue to keep him in prayer for his healing. And we say, Lord, Hear our prayers. Richard's getting his exercise, so he's going back and forth with the microphone for those of you at home on the other side. Thankful for that opportunity. <laughs> so um, we heard, I mean, this is for Ukiah Symphony, that I'm a player and, and a board chair. Uh, we got the word from the college that we will be able to have audiences for starting in our December market, which is going to be very small and be limited to our subscribers, 60 per day, Saturday and Sunday. So, but that was a big joy because uh, 
Absolutely. So the, the good news that the Ukiah Symphony has heard from the college that they will be able to, in December, to begin having in-person symphonies again for the, with a limited audience, but nonetheless, being able to have it in person meaningful for the musicians and those who have missed being able to attend music performances in person. Um, so for that, we say thanks be to God. Anyone else this morning? Sure, okay. I, I could have mentioned this at the beginning of our service too, but I had the opportunity earlier in the week to go out to the ocean in Marin County and it, um, the ponds are full, the reservoir is nowhere near full, the Nicasio Reservoir looks so much healthier than it did. When I was at the ocean, um, there was a sort of partial cloud cover and the water looked like polished steel. It was glassy, beautiful. It was a, 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 I'm really thankful for that day. Absolutely, so a day earlier in the week when Richard was able to go to Marin County and not just observe the reservoirs that are filled with water and that change, but also just the beauty of being out on the ocean itself and the cloud cover providing that steel gray uh, um, color on the water it just sounds like it was absolutely beautiful. And we join you um, in the joy that it must have brought. We say, thanks be to God. Anyone else? I invite you to take a few moments in silent prayer and meditation and just whatever maybe you haven't been able to share out loud or someone that you've heard about that you want to silently pray for and then I will pray. So oh God, we are humbled, we are awe-inspired, we are grateful that whatever is going on in our lives, that we can bring that to you, we can entrust it to you and know that it is in your care. You've heard the joys and concerns that have been mentioned today. You know the ones that we've held silently in our hearts and that are on our minds. And we entrust all of those to you. We also lift up this church and its ministries and the different things and the, that you put on our hearts as we continue to journey forward. And we just ask that you give us the courage to keep the giving cycle going, recognizing where you have touched our lives, and for us to respond to that so that you can take whatever we are able to give and bless and multiply that. We long to partner with you. Help us to have that courage. Help us to trust. For even as Jesus promised to us that he came so that we might have the fullness of life. That is, that is the, the big picture. That is your desire for us, that through our giving, you continue to bless others through us, and you bless us. And now together, we pray the prayer that, that Jesus taught us, praying, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom.
um, I'm taking the place of Linda this morning uh, <laughs> to, to give you, uh, share our stewardship me message. And I uh, wanted to say that uh, we're reflecting on Jen's sermon about the circle of giving and, you know, God and us and God and us, that um, when we look at the upcoming year, um, it's a blessing that uh, our staff's going to get a cost of living increase. Jim, would you say that amount? <laughs> it, well, it really spiked up. Yeah, 6.2 percent. Last year was 1.3, so yeah. that means if, we, if our giving stays the same, we're falling behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but we've, we've got blessings. We've got blessings of your gifts, the congregation, and then we also have other gifts that have been blessed that are, you know, from the past. So I just wanted to offer that up and say we'll be looking at, the finance team will be looking at all that and hopefully we can come up with a, a year that meets the needs of the church and the staff and everything. So, um, planted by streams of water, uh, this um, stewardship uh, campaign comes from Psalms 1 verse 3a. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season. And I loved Jen's analogy with the watermelon. That really <laughs> that really hit me, the one seed and then you know, and you know, then the, all the fruit and then all the seeds. So the Psalms often compare us to animals in search of water. In the twenty third we are sheep who drink from calm waters. In the forty second we are the deer longing for God as the deer longs for a stream. But in first psalm, something is different. We are not the animals passing from stream to stream. We are the tree fixed in the riverside, our roots running deep and wide, nourished by waters of God's mercy and love and the collective ecosystem. While I love the beauty of the 23rd and 42nd Psalms, the imagery of the first Psalm is the most moving because it's the image of life in the Christian community. We do not come and go from the stream taking only what we need when we need it. Our roots are firmly planted and growing deeper and stronger by the day. We only take from the ecosystem, but we not only take from the ecosystem, but we also contribute to it. We, we're committed to this spot, this ecosystem, no matter the changing of the seasons. And those are the words of Reverend Alex Shaywell, and you have the copy in your bulletin. So I um, invite you now to um, offer your, your pledges for the coming coming year, and I guess, as Jen said, you can put them in the collection plate, you can put them in the church, <laughs> or you can get send them to the office or use the tithe link. So.
prayer by from Susan, Reverend Susan A. Blaine. And I thought, please bow your heads in prayer as we dedicate our gifts. O Holy One who dwells in our midst, you abide in each heart and root yourself in our communities. Yet always you push us out of our comfortable places, calling us into the ever wide world of human diversity. You challenge us to recognize in others your beloved face. We offer these gifts to you as an act of love. Take and multiply them. Show us how to create a world where a stranger is welcome, created as cherished of God, honored with justice, engaged in peace. All this we ask in the name of the one who calls us friend and invites us to ponder ever more deeply, who is my neighbor? Amen. with me for our closing blessing. Grounded in God's love, we are sent out to share abundance with others. Go forth, following as the Holy Spirit leads you, moving in love and compassion, pursuing justice and mercy, and trusting in God's provision and care. May God's love be with you along all the paths you will travel.